fridge is one of those places where if it looks clean on the outside, we can tell ourselves that it's clean on the inside, but we all know that isn't quite the case. You've got those crisper drawers that aren't so clean. Shelves over time can have crusty buildup from chicken juice, ketchup, maple syrup, and anything else you put in there, it's going to drip, it's going to leave its mark, and eventually it's going to gross you out. So in this video, I'm not only going to show you how to clean a fridge properly, because you should be doing it every now and then, but I'm going to show you how to clean your fridge like a pro. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if when you take a jar out of the fridge, you know there's a little bit of bounce back, you know it's a little bit sticky down there. Come on, you've been there, I have. And just a quick note, this video has been brought to you by Squarespace. Make sure that you stick around until the end of the video where I'll share a special offer with you. First things first, you gotta empty the fridge. Don't be judgmental here, just pull everything out and get it on your counter. What I did instead of unplugging my fridge is I actually turned off the cooling mechanism so that I wasn't wasting electricity during this process. You just have to make sure that you turn it back on at the end of the cleaning. Now, as with any cleaning task, I'm just working from the top to the bottom. That way I'm being strategic and I'm not forgetting anything. Next up, it's time to remove the baskets, the bins, and the shelves. If you're not too familiar with your fridge, I would say to do this slowly and carefully. That way you don't break anything. Having been in the cleaning business for a long time, I can tell you I have broken one or two fridge shelves and I've learned over the years, do it gingerly. Now I'm going to pre-treat the inside of the fridge with a simple all-purpose cleaner. We'll deal with that after. Next up, I'm sprinkling some baking soda in all of these little trays and bins and on the shelves, as well as spraying it with all-purpose cleaner. This is going to help provide a little bit of extra abrasion, deodorization, and stain removal. I've got a cleaning toothbrush, a microfiber cloth, and some all-purpose cleaner, and I'm going to tackle the inside of this fridge moving from the top to the bottom, working my way from left to right. Now I'm respraying any areas that I clean only because I wanna make sure that they're nice and wet when I'm actually giving them a wipe down. That way if there are any stains, they'll come off easier. The cleaning toothbrush is there to get into those little grooves, particularly in the crisper drawer and the shelf area. Uh, you know, you can find like dried up pieces of lettuce or small little chunks of cheese that you really can't get out any other way aside from flicking them out with a little toothbrush. Finally, I'm tackling the gaskets, which are those little rubber seals around the doors. Those can get dirty and filthy over time, so use your cleaning toothbrush, give it a good little scrub, and then wipe it clean with a microfiber cloth. You can also do your door hinges at this time too. Now I'll take this double-sided sponge, I make sure it's damp, and then I'm going to tackle each one of these shelves and bins and drawers. It doesn't take too long. What I find is when they've had a chance to pre-treat, they clean up much easier, and that baking soda really helps remove any of the extra gunky stuff that's been built up. Now, for these bigger items, I like to clean them and replace them one at a time because frankly, it can be really overwhelming to find counter space, particularly when all of your refrigerated items are on your counter as well. So for these bigger things, I would just clean them, dry them, and put them right back. Now, it's important that you dry everything really well because you don't wanna have excess moisture going back into the fridge after you've cleaned it. Again, if you're unsure how your shelves or your bins get reinstalled, just work slowly and make sure that you don't break or damage anything because these fridge components can be so expensive to replace.
These panels of glass are also very challenging to work with, so just move slowly, handle them gently, and when you're cleaning and rinsing and replacing them, just take a little bit of extra time. You've gotta take my word on this one. What can be particularly difficult to clean in your fridge are these little rings or stubborn spots that have just sat there and built up over time. That is what's gonna require the most amount of cleaning, but that baking soda and all-purpose cleaner combo really helps remove any of that stickiness. The other thing you might notice, particularly in your crisper drawers, are stains from, you know, zucchini or broccoli or kale or whatever have you that sat at the bottom of the bin for a long time and eventually discolored it. This is something that you might be able to remove with a bit of baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. So you can always give that trick a shot as well. Now these bins came out pretty nice and clean, so I'm pretty happy. My fridge, I think, actually looks better than the day I moved in. Now, I'm going to start filling it back up. What I do is have a microfiber cloth and a little bit of all-purpose cleaner handy. And before I replace an item, of course I make sure, yeah, I still want it, I still need it, and it's still edible. And the next thing I'll do is give the bottom of that container a wipe. That's why you see me doing this in fast motion. I'm just holding, wiping, replacing and anything that I'm not keeping, I'm just leaving on the counter. This is also a great chance for you to take inventory of what's in your fridge, what you might be out of, you know, do I need more pesto? Is that coconut milk just about finished? You know, you can really start to keep track of things and make a mental note of what you're looking for. Always important to replace your box of baking soda. You should be doing this four times a year or at the change of every season. It just helps your fridge stay a little fresher and your food taste better. Your floor is actually pretty crusty at the end of a fridge cleaning, so you wanna make sure that you give that a nice clean. And of course, I turn the temperature back on in the fridge as well. Just like I've taught you how to clean your fridge like a pro without having to hire a pro, Squarespace can do that for you if you wanna build a website. Squarespace allows you to create a beautiful website or an online store with award-winning templates and receive 24-7 customer support. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform. To create your website, simply go to squarespace.com slash cleanmyspace to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. And that leads me to this week's comment question, which is, and by the way, it's pretty controversial. Are you somebody who's a stickler for following the best before dates? If something is expired in your fridge, you don't push it, you ditch it. Or are you somebody who's willing to toe the line a little bit and fry up that beef, even if, you know, it's a day or two past its best buy date. Let me know in the comments down below. I have pushed it with milk. You know, if it smells bad, then we won't use it. But if it's a couple days past, same thing with yogurt, then it's okay. With cheese, I kind of do an inspection. I see if there's mold on it. If there's not, and it's a little past its date, I'll still eat it. But there are certain things like chicken I'm not willing to take a gamble on. So I'd love to know what you think is okay and is not okay in the comments down below. If you wanna see what we're up to during the rest of the week, you can follow along on Instagram. I am at Melissa Maker, Chad is at the Chad Reynolds, and the two of us are at Clean My Space. Here are a couple of other videos I think you're going to love, and if you wanna learn more about Maker's Clean microfiber cloths, you can click this button right over here. 
There is a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video and click this button right here to subscribe and begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.